Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin Read for you by Simon Vance Fire and Blood Being a History of the Targaryen Kings of Westeros Volume 1 From Aegon I, the Conqueror To the Regency of Aegon III, the Dragonbane By Archmaester Gildane of the Citadel of Old Town here transcribed by George R. R. Martin. Aegon's Conquest The maesters of the Citadel who keep the histories of Westeros have used Aegon's Conquest as their touchstone for the past three hundred years. Births, deaths, battles, and other events are dated either A.C. after the Conquest or B.C. before the Conquest. True scholars know that such dating is far from precise. Aegon Targaryen's conquest of the Seven Kingdoms did not take place in a single day. More than two years passed between Aegon's landing and his Old Town coronation, and even then the conquest remained incomplete since Dawn remained unsubdued. Sporadic attempts to bring the Dornish men into the realm continued all through King Aegon's reign, and well into the reigns of his sons, making it impossible to fix a precise end date for the wars of conquest. Even the start date is a matter of some misconception. Many assume wrongly that the reign of King Aegon I Targaryen began on the day he landed at the mouth of the Blackwater Rush, beneath the three hills where the city of King's Landing would eventually stand. Not so. The day of Aegon's landing was celebrated by the king and his descendants, but the conqueror actually dated the start of his reign from the day he was crowned and anointed in the starry sept of Old Town by the High Septon of the Faith. This coronation took place two years after Aegon's landing, well after all three of the major battles of the Wars of Conquest had been fought and won. Thus it can be seen that most of Aegon's actual conquering took place from two to one B.C., before the conquest. The Targaryens were of pure Valyrian blood, dragon lords of ancient lineage. Twelve years before the doom of Valyria, 114 B.C., Aenar Targaryen sold his holdings in the freehold and the lands of the Long Summer, and moved with all his wives, wealth, slaves, dragons, siblings, kin and children, to Dragonstone a bleak island citadel beneath a smoking mountain in the narrow sea. At its apex, Valyria was the greatest city in the known world, the centre of civilization. Within its shining walls, two score rival houses vied for power and glory in court and council, rising and falling in an endless, subtle, oft savage struggle for dominance. The Targaryens were far from the most powerful of the dragon lords, and their rivals saw their flight to Dragonstone as an act of surrender, as cowardice. But Lord Aenar's maiden daughter, Danis, known forever afterward as Danis the Dreamer, had foreseen the destruction of Valyria by fire. And when the doom came, twelve years later, the Targaryens were the only dragon lords to survive. Dragonstone had been the westernmost outpost of Valyrian power for two centuries. Its location athwart the gullet gave its lords a stranglehold on Blackwater Bay and enabled both the Targaryens and their close allies, the Valerians of Driftmark, a lesser house of Valyrian descent, to fill their coffers off the passing trade. Valerian ships, along with those of another allied Valyrian house, the Celtigars of Claw Isle, dominated the middle reaches of the narrow sea whilst the Targaryens ruled the skies with their dragons. Yet even so, for the best part of a hundred years after the doom of Valyria, the rightly named Century of Blood, House Targaryen looked east, not west, and took little interest in the affairs of Westeros. Gaemon Targaryen, brother and husband to Danis the Dreamer, followed Aenar the Exile as Lord of Dragonstone and became known as Gaemon the Glorious. Gaemon's son Aegon and his daughter Elena ruled together after his death. After them, the lordship passed to their son Magon, his brother Aerys, and Aerys's sons Aelix, Balon, and Damion. The last of the three brothers was Damion. 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?